Our top story today, an American Navy strike group, which was stationed near Singapore, has begun sailing towards the Korean Peninsula. The head of the U.S. Pacific Monk Fleet, Harry Harris, says it's in direct response to what he called provocations by the DPRK. Carrier Strike Group 1 was established in October 2009, and the USS Carl Vinson is its current flagship. A uh, nuclear-powered Nimitz-class supercarrier was commissioned in the 1980s. It measures about 300 meters and has a displacement of some 100,000 tons. There are about 90 fixed-wing aircraft and helicopters aboard. The carrier group also includes carrier Air Wing 17, two Ticonderoga class cruisers and the ships of a destroyer Squadron 1. And for more on this, we're now joined by Raphael Wober from Pyongyang, senior video journalist at the Associate Press. Thanks for joining us, Raphael. Uh, has there been any reaction from the DPRK regarding the U.S. strike group deployment so far? Uh, the DPRK has uh, reacted strongly to the U.S. move towards Syria. What will come next? So far, there is nothing official from the DPRK about this news that came out over the past 24 hours, the movement of the U.S. aircraft carrier group towards the Korean Peninsula. But that's not surprising. It often takes some time. And certainly, the DPRK did react strongly against the deployment of the same aircraft carrier when it came to waters off the coast of Korea just last month, taking part in big U.S.-South Korea joint military exercises. At that time, the DPRK DPRK said that it would react if it felt that the U.S. forces in any way infringed its sovereignty and said that the U.S. forces around Korea are in the crosshairs of the Korean People's Army. So that's clear last month. It's likely that they will come out with a similar reaction this time. And of course, as you mentioned, against the Syrian, the, the U.S. strikes on Syria last week, the DPRK did belatedly over the weekend come out with a very strong reaction to that. 시내는 오직 힘으로 맞서야 하며 핵무력을 비상. The reality today goes to prove that any aggression should be countered with force only, and it was entirely just to remarkably bolster our nuclear force. We bolstered our self-defense capabilities to cope with a reckless move for a war by the U.S. and to defend ourselves with our own force. Going back a few years, the DPRK, deep officials from the DPRK may have made very clear that they drew a clear lesson from the experience of Libya and its lead, past leader Gaddafi. He agreed to give up his nuclear programs and then he ended up dead. So they have, they have looked at the international situation and they do very strongly want to cling to their own determination to defend themselves by building up their missile and nuclear programs. Well, Rafael, the DPRK has continued its missile tests after the UN posted its strongest sanctions this year. And also April the 15th marks the day of the sun in the DPRK, which is the anniversary of the birth of King Il-sung. Uh, what can we expect? And is there a way to ease tensions on the Korean Peninsula? There are these big anniversaries here in the DPRK this this month, plus of course tomorrow is the annual parliament meeting and often in the past the DPRK has chosen to use these kinds of uh, anniversaries or occasions to also stage big tests of its defense capabilities, whether rocket launches or nuclear tests. But so far, there's no clear sign of that. Foreign observers looking at satellite imagery have said that the DPRK has prepared its nuclear test site and could carry out a sixth nuclear test at any time. But again, so far, there's nothing from the DPRK about that. Normally, in the past, before nuclear tests, there would be no public warning. In the case of rocket launches, if it is for satellite launches, the DPRK has made public warnings in advance of that. But there hasn't been any of that this time around in April. Five years ago, 2012, in the same situation in April, there was a big satellite launch attempt which failed that time and was successful later in the year. And on those occasions the DPRK did give warning in a standard way to international organizations. And this time around there hasn't been any of that yet this April. And in terms of a way out, 
in spite of all the daily news of military moves or military exercises and the increase in tensions, I think that if everybody takes a step back, they have to agree that the only real way out is diplomacy. Up till now, there's no good sign of that. On the talk shows in the U.S. yesterday, U.S. State Department Secretary of State Tillerson did say that if the GPRK stops its tests, they might be able to talk. In the past, preconditions don't help talk start in the Korean Peninsula, but we can only hope that, in, that behind the scenes there is some kind of negotiation going on between the US and DPRK, whether through an intermediary like China or directly, and that in the coming days and weeks there will be a chance that some kind of movement towards sitting down and talking could happen and all of the military maneuvering could ratchet down. Thank you very much, Raphael. We we're reporting from Pyongyang. For the reaction from South Korea, we go to our correspondent, Shane Ham in Seoul. Shane, hello there. Uh, what do we know about the U.S. Navy strike group deployment? What message is the move sending? Well, South Korea's defense ministry had some comments this morning during their uh, daily briefing here, here this morning saying that this decision re just reflects uh, just how serious the U.S. considers the threat that's coming from the DPRK to divert this USS uh, Carl Vinson strike group over to the Korean Peninsula when it was just here just a month ago to participate in those joint U.S.-South Korea military drills, which happened to be ongoing until the end of this month as well. Also, uh, when the spokesman was asked whether South Korea was given advance notice of this, uh, he mentioned that the U.S. and South Korea, two allies, are in very close cooperation and communication when it comes to decisions like this. And also White House National Security Advisor uh, McMaster had mentioned on Sunday, their local time, that this is a, quote, prudent decision and that President Trump had asked for all options on the, on the table to be presented to him. Now, uh, what, why this has many people uh, obviously very nervous is the fact that this comes on the heels of U.S. military strikes in Syria. But if you compare the two, uh, Syria and the DPRK, there are two diff very different situations. Uh, the DPRK ha has the, the reported capability of uh, nuclear capabilities, which uh, would make the situation much different. So uh, that's where South Korea stands at this point with this latest decision. Well, Shane, today China's top nuclear envoy, Wu Dawei, heads to South Korea for a five-day visit. What can you tell, tell us about his schedule and what can we really expect? Well, as far as we know, uh, with uh, the special representative's uh, schedule, he's scheduled to meet with South Korean Foreign Minister Yoon Byung-se this morning, and about an hour later, he'll meet with his South Korean co counterpart, Kim Hong-yoon. And this comes uh, just four months after the two had met back in Beijing last December. And of course, a lot has happened uh, during those four months. We've seen a series of missile tests and also uh, reported rocket engine tests by the DPRK. But uh, this is all part of a lot of diplomacy that's been taking place within the six-party uh, realm, the structure here of the two Koreas, we have Japan, South Korea, uh, the U.S., uh, as well as Russia. But uh, what's missing here is the DPRK hasn't been to the six-party talk roundtable uh, in almost a decade. Those talks have been uh, pretty much dead since then. But uh, the main obstacle to that is, Rafa had mentioned that just a moment ago, and that these preconditions of the DPRK needing to show sincere commitment to denuclearize being one of those preconditions, and the South Korea and the United States aren't interested in talks just for talk's sake without these uh, promises made by Pyongyang. Thank you very much, Shane Ham, reporting from Seoul. Well, China has always backed the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. And for more on that, we are joined by our reporter Wu Guoxiu in Beijing. Hello there, Guoxiu. Uh, what can you tell us about China's uh, stance on the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula? Uh, where is China standing? Hello, Dongning. China has always been advocating solving the issue through dialogue. Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Hua Chunying had earlier said that all relevant parties should exercise restraint and not take any actions that will aggravate re uh, regional tensions. China urges all relevant parties to attach importance to China's efforts in pushing for the resumption of the six-party talks on the nuclear issue. Uh, Beijing's recent proposal is that the dual suspension approach which calls for the DPRK to suspend its nuclear miss and missile programs and the U.S. and South Korea to halt their large-scale military exercises. Chinese experts are saying that this dual-halt approach 
approach is needed to alleviate Pyongyang's security concerns and notify the country in the meantime that its nuclear path only increases those concerns. But whether the proposal will be successful depends on uh, the sincerity of uh, the relevant parties for solving the problems. Experts say that given the needed amount of pressure, it is possible that the DPRK will make a long-awaited commitment uh, to denuclearization. That could be a window of opportunity of all relevant parties uh, to resume the six-party talks and put in action a peace uh, mechanism. But the success of the whole plan hinges on whether the U.S. and the DPRK accept the dual hot approach. Don't need. Uh, Guoxiu, Chinese President Xi Jinping and his U.S. counterpart Donald Trump also discussed the DPRK issue during their meeting at Mar-a-Lago. What did they have to say? China's Foreign Minister Wang Yi has earlier briefed about the achievement of the talks between President Xi and Donald Trump. Uh, he says that the, during the meeting, the two leaders exchanged their opinions on the Korean Peninsula, nu uh, Korean Peninsula nuclear issue and other regional and global affairs of concern. Both sides agreed to expand cooperation at multi-levels to make contributions to world peace, stability and uh, prosperity. But uh, we're still lack of detailed information on that at this moment. But we're expecting more comment on this issue in three hours from the foreign ministry. Thank you very much. We've your reporting from Beijing. And now for more insight into this issue, we are joined by Professor Zhu Chenghu from the Defense Affairs Institute of the PLA National Defense University. Uh, Professor Zhu, welcome to Global Watch. Now the Carl Vinson striking group is heading towards the Korean Peninsula. What's the motivation behind this deployment and why now? I think uh, a lot of factors have led to this sort of move by the U.S. military. Why is the uh, provocative actions of DPRK, even though there are so many sanctions put on DPRK, for example, the missile launch, etc. And second is actually the change of leadership. Uh, it demonstrates that the behavior of uh, uh, Donald Trump is different from President Obama. How different? Are we the seeing a tougher, tougher uh, uh, Yes, tough yes. standing from yeah, uh, the yes, Trump administration. Yes, because if you look at himself, he is besieged with so many difficulties at home, and I think he will demonstrate his capability and the determination on our side. If we look at the strike against uh, Syria and the military movement mm -hmm. on the uh, against the DPRK, this is a very very s a clear demonstration of uh, his determination and the capability in managing the international affairs in the, and in handling the uh, hot issues or hot uh, sports in the world. And the third is actually the difference that, uh, uh, dif uh, third is actually the situation that uh, uh, among the, the, this new administration will not only try to uh, uh, give up uh, many of the practices and uh, the uh, documents or agreement assigned by the assigned by the former administration. Mm -hmm. It will also behave unilaterally against a lot of things mm -hmm. uh, like uh, uh, Syria and DPRK and uh, many other things like Iran maybe in the future. Mm -hmm. So these are differences, and of course this is uh, uh, this is also for the purpose of uh, intimidating our uh, uh, DPRK mm -hmm. and the main other countries like Russia and even China. Mm -hmm. So that shows that uh, this administration is determined mm -hmm. outside to, to, uh, to the outside that mm -hmm. uh, it will have a very, very strong stance on the, this issues. A lot of intimidation actually, uh, apart from the Carl Vinson striking group. The US Secretary of State says military strikes against Syria are warning to other nations, including DPRK. What does he mean, military actions on the Korean Peninsula? Uh, I think at the present uh, it's very, very difficult because TPRK is totally different from the, uh, the former countries which were uh, attacked by the United States, like Iraq, uh, Afghanistan or Libya. Mm -hmm. So TPRK is totally different because it is armed with nuclear weapons or nuclear devices. Mm -hmm. If uh, you cannot destroy all these nuclear devices, uh, what will be the scenario? Mm -hmm. Maybe. 
the uh, the the Seoul will be destroyed, mm -hmm. and that will be disaster for South Korea, and right. that may lead to the withdrawal of mm -hmm. United uh, military presence, uh, United States military presence from mm -hmm. East Asia. Mm -hmm. And secondly, TPRK is equipped with about. 2,000 tons of uh, chemical and uh, biological weapons, mm -hmm. which is a terrible challenge mm -hmm. to the world, not only to Korean Peninsula mm -hmm. and Japan or China. Because uh, if you look at the situation, uh, look at the case that uh, how uh, Kim Jong Nam was killed. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. uh, this biological uh, technology in DPRK is very, very advanced. Mm -hmm. We can still remember. Mm -hmm. The situation of SARS in China. Mm -hmm. If this sort of uh, biological uh, weapons are used, I think it will be terrible. So you mean uh, DPRK will not become uh, the next Syria? I think it's very difficult mm -hmm. because uh, it's uh, uh, in Syria it has no means to retaliate, mm -hmm. but DPRK has a lot of means to retaliate. Not, necess not necessarily to retaliate the continent of America. But Japan and South Korea will be attacked, and the U.S. military presence in R.K. will be attacked. But a Russian official has expressed worries that the U.S. deployment of the aircraft carrier strike group may push Pyongyang to respond hastily. Do you think U.S. is trying to regain initiative on the DPRK issue and even on other international issues such as Syria? Um, maybe. It's uh, possible, but I think at the present uh, it will take time, mm -hmm. and it may need uh, great efforts from the United States. I don't think this sort of intimidation mm -hmm. will force the uh, DPRK to give her its uh, original position or to give her its nuclear program. Mm -hmm. I think it will be very, very difficult. I don't think uh, uh, DPRK will, at, will accept any intimidation or uh, sanctions. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the history, I think that's the fact. Mm -hmm. So it's very difficult. I think this will only deteriorate the uh, situation on, on Korean Peninsula and mm -hmm. in East Asia. I don't think this will work. So this will not be the right approach to solve I don't the think uh, it's, I issue. I don't think it's the right approach. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, maybe at the present stage, it is a necessary move for mm -hmm for President Donald Trump to take. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you very much, uh, Professor Zhu Chenghu from the Defense Affairs Institute of the PLA National Defense University. Thank you very much for your insight. Now you're now watching Global Watch on CGTN, still ahead in the program.